Debbie Clark, and I'm the lay leader here at the Methodist Church in Burnett, and I uh, am also uh, in the middle of our prayer garden. Uh, the prayer garden is a sanctuary in which we can come and just spend some alone time and talk to God and tell Him what's on our hearts and our minds. And I encourage each and every one of you, if you have the opportunity to drive by, you can sit in your car out on the street or you can come and sit in one of our benches and, and just take some time to be with God and tell Him what's on your heart. Uh, the prayer garden was uh, put together by the uh, Master Gardeners here in Burnett and we really appreciate all the guidance and direction they gave us in establishing this prayer garden today. A um, couple things I'd like to talk to you about. Um, I want to ask you a question, I guess, first. Um, how many of you had a favorite song, uh, whether it's Secular World or at church or what, wherever, that you had when you were growing up? You know, perhaps it, uh, you know, it was a song that had special meaning, a group of girlfriends would get together and sing, or um, for me, it was uh, uh, a song I learned at church, and it wasn't This Little Light of Mine or the B-I-B-L-E, but it was the first song I can remember committing to memory, and I actually felt a part of that song. Perhaps some of you have heard of the song. It's called In the Garden, which... Uh, that's why I chose the garden today to tell you about this and uh, for me as a young kiddo growing up in the church and singing having everyone singing songs uh, some of them I would get some of them I didn't but this one had a particular uh, impact on me because I could just visualize myself walking into a lush green flowering garden uh, some something like what you read in the Bible uh, uh, in, in the Garden of Eden and um, as I entered this uh, garden I always felt uh, the, the crispness of the morning I always felt like it was an autumn fall morning uh, because it was so nice and cool and in the distance I could see Jesus sitting there waiting for me smiling offering his hands as an invitation to come spend some time with me. Uh, just um, a, a peaceful, relaxing feeling that I had. And, and I often uh, reflect back on that memory. Uh, and these, uh, whenever I'm in trouble or the times are weary and I just don't think I can go on, I think back of that invitation that Jesus offers me while I'm in the garden. Uh, during this pandemic, it's caused a lot of uh, turmoil within our souls in that, um, you know, some of us have spent the time cleaning out closets and uh, finishing, completing those unfinished tasks that we've had. Um, some of us may be reading. I know I think I've read more in the last six months than I have in the last six years. and. Uh, but I actually went through some of the books that I have in my library. And, and one of the books that I, I had and I wanted to share with you is called Praying the Names of God. It's by Ann Spangler. And she actually takes 26 different names or titles of God that the Israelites or the Hebrews used and uh, gives a definition for them. And, uh, you know, at first this was just an educational uh, thing for me just you know learning more about uh, the ancients you know how they uh, prayed to God and uh, but during this time it was like a light bulb clicked on for me and that um, I, I found some interesting names that that I thought was interesting anyway that to pray to Jesus or to pray to God and and I found myself drawing closer to him becoming more intimate with him and uh, some of you uh, may be familiar with some of these. Um, let, let me bring uh, some of these uh, to your attention. Uh, El Shaddai, uh, El Shaddai, I'm sorry. Um, it means God Almighty. And uh, there, the Lord is my shepherd, uh, Yahweh Rohi. And uh, some of us may have heard of Abba, meaning Father. And then there is uh, Yahweh and uh, Yahweh is another name for Lord and we see Lord all the time in our Bible but to Moses and to 
uh, Isaac, uh, when, when they, uh, to Joseph, when they prayed to God, it was to Yahweh that they prayed to. Uh, some of the, uh, one of the most challenging uh, names that I saw uh, in this time when I reflected was Yahweh to Suri. And that is the Lord is my rock. And I don't know about you, but I need a rock in my life right now. Uh, all the chaos with the viruses, uh, with the uh, political arena, uh, the unrest and the judicial uh, racist uh, uh, issues that are uh, going throughout the country right now. Um, I, I need a rock, uh, some, someone I can, uh, or something that I can trust, and I can trust in God. Uh, I can trust in Yahweh to Suri, uh, for he will protect us and he will take care of us. And through all of this, um, he will overcome and, and he will bring us through it. Um, now I'd like to offer some prayers up uh, to Yahweh to Suri at this time. And uh, as I pray uh, these things, I'm going to pause a little bit after some of these things and allow you the opportunity to pray your own personal prayer. Let us pray. Yahweh Tesuri, you are the rock in which we take refuge when things get to be too much. We come to you today to give you thanks and praise for being that fortress in which we can find peace and rest. We pray today for our church family. For those who are quarantined and unable to get out and enjoy the fellowship of family and friends, may they find comfort in phone calls and other correspondence from others. For those who are having health issues and having to have procedures, may they have peace in knowing that Yahweh is the great physician. For those who have lost loved ones in dealing with loneliness, Yahweh Rofeo is the one God who heals. We pray for our own family and friends. For those with children who are raising a family in a new environment. For those out-of-town friends we cannot visit or vacation with. For those who have lost their jobs and are dealing with new economic issues. Yahweh, we pray for those in specialized professions, for the medical personnel, the doctors, the nurses, EMT, hospital staff, researchers, those that are working on vaccines, nursing home staff, hospice, caregivers, the list goes on. We pray, Lord, for those who put their lives on the line each day for us, those in law enforcement and the firefighters. Lord, we pray for the teachers and all those in the education field, the bus drivers, the cafeteria workers, the counselors that as school begins and the students fill the classes, keep each and one, everyone safe. For community leaders and all politicians, whether state or national, we pray that they do the right thing at the right time for the right reasons. Lord, may the God that provides Yahweh Yuri protect the homeless and the hungry and send his angels to guide and direct their paths.
We pray for the armed services protecting our nation from terrorism so that we can live in our lives in peace. And Abba Father, we pray that we will be the disciple that you call us to be during these times, that we will be a better person because of your presence in our lives. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Amen. I'd like to thank you for joining me here today in the prayer garden. And I encourage each and every one of you, if you're out and about, to drive by and uh, just uh, take a look at the flowers blooming and, and spend some time with Jesus. He's waiting there for you, smiling with open arms, waiting to have that conversation. Thanks.